get going. Um, let's see. Here we go. Where is my mute? Sometimes it's hard to find. There it is. Okay, Marianne, I will include you in my email for sure. Mute everybody. And come to laying on your back. We'll get started on our back today. And the reason for that is because there's such an aspect of breathing and of our um, heart space and opening up of our hearts that has to do with what we're doing with our backs. So from your back, knees are bent, feet on the floor, you can drop your knees in together to touch. You can take hands to rest at your hip bones if you want, or one hand to your belly, one hand to your heart. You can decide there what feels the best to you. And then as you let your eyes close for a few moments, take a couple big breaths. And as you breathe, feel the expansion and the contraction of your breath as it relates to the ground. What happens in your body as you breathe when you have that feedback of the floor? Noticing a couple more big breaths, letting your breath travel the entire length of your spine. So notice all the way down to your tail and all the way up to your upper palate, which is technically where your spine ends. And now in particular, notice that space around your heart, in between your shoulder blades, at your ribs. And notice as your breath expands you into the ground, how much you expand upward and outward. And now take another moment with your breath to tune into an intention for yourself, for your practice. You can keep your eyes closed if you would like to, or you're welcome to open them. But taking elbows down to the ground so that your fingertips are aimed toward the ceiling, walk your shoulder blades a little closer together. And, at, and then as you press down with your elbows, start to engage your ribs into the ground and tilt your sitting bones down. So you have a little bit more natural curve to your spine here as you do this engagement. So rib cage down. Tilt your sitting bones down so you have a lumbar curve, a little lift through your low back, and take a big breath now, trying to maintain that curve. You have two different curves happening, a lumbar curve where your low back is lifting, and a thoracic spine curve where your rib cage and your upper back are pressing down. One more big breath here. And now draw knees in towards your chest and notice that this makes your lumbar spine go flat into the ground, or even sometimes it makes your sitting bones tilt up. So rock a little side to side and have the intention of lengthening your low back a little bit more. And then set your feet down again, and we're gonna to begin to move a little bit with our breath. Arms come down by your sides, palms down here. And again, notice, ribs drawing in to press the upper back into the ground and then tilt your sitting bones so that your sitting bones are moving down, low back is lifting. So lumbar curve, thoracic spine curve, two different curves here. 
Now, as you inhale, you're gonna lift your hips and lift your arms at the same time. As you exhale, lower hips and arms down to the ground. One is a bigger motion, one is a smaller motion. So try to slow one down or speed one up so that they match. Exhaling, lowering them down. Inhaling, lifting them up. As you move through a couple more rounds of this, just notice for yourself if as you lower or as you lift, you lose any of the curve in your back. Oftentimes, when we lower, we have that habit of setting our low back down before our tailbone. See if you can set your tailbone down before your low back and even not let your low back completely go down. Inhale, lift your arms and hips. Exhale, lower all the way back down. One more time, full inhale. Long, deep exhale. And now right knee draws in towards your chest, extend your left leg all the way out long against the ground. Take a couple breaths as you move your right knee side to side, just giving a little wake up and warm up to the hip flexors. A little bit of compression into the gut. And then as you inhale, switch sides, left knee in, right leg extends all the way out. And again, move your knee a little side to side. And then both feet to the ground, walk your feet out wide, drop both knees over to the left side for a windshield wiper. Take a big full breath here and just notice, not trying to make it the deepest, most extreme version of this pose, but just notice what this stretches for you. And then take the legs over to the left side. And again, just enough to feel that initial stretch, not trying to take it as deep as you possibly can. And then back into center, and again, knees draw in, and this time circles with the knees in one direction. And circles with the knees in the other direction. And then go ahead and roll over to one side and push yourself up to your hands and knees, just long enough to set yourself up, wrists under shoulders, knees under hips. Rotate elbow pits forward and push, expanding into the upper back. Tuck toes and lift hips up and back, downward facing dog pose. If that's in your practice, you can always stay on hands and knees here. But then move around a little bit, maybe sway the hips or pedal out bending one knee at a time for just another two breaths. And then walk your way forward, coming into your forward fold at the front of your mat. Take an inhale and lengthen part way, extend your heart. Exhale and fold over your legs. Hands to hips, press back on hips, start to lift up and open through the shoulders and rise. And so now we're gonna turn sideways on our mat. Take a wide stance, turning your feet so that they're parallel, think of pinky toe edges parallel to each other. And then with hands at your hips, pause and open up through your front. So walk your hands further back. As you walk your hands further back, start to push down on tops of glutes and lift your ribs, lift your chest, lift your heart. Hogging elbows back and even think of reaching back through the elbows, through the triceps toward the wall behind you. Engage the low ribs. Take another big inhale, lift up through your chest. Exhale, bent knees, hinge and fold, taking as deep a fold as you would like. And feel free to use something underneath your hands here. This is the first hamstring stretch that we're doing today. So take a moment to pedal out with your legs. Bend one knee at a time and have the intention of being gentle with yourself. Again, not necessarily going as deeply as you've ever gone. Take another big deep breath here. And then bring hands to hips, knees are bent, squeeze your glutes, lift shoulders first and rise. Now turn 
right foot out, turning your foot to the right side, bend into your right knee, coming into your warrior two position here. And as you reach your arms, stretch in both directions through fingers, plug in with shoulder blades, take one more big breath. And then hands to hips, work feet toward parallel, legs toward straight, and then turn your left foot out. Bend into your left knee and again, reach your arms. Take a big deep breath. Think of broadening through the collarbones here. Both arms are lifting to shoulder height. Reach, plug in with shoulder blades, supporting the heart space. And then hands come to your hips, work left leg towards straight, turn your feet toward parallel, and then turn your right foot out again. This time straight with your leg. Shift your hips back, creating that hip crease in the right side. Extend your heart to the left, or to the right rather, and then bring your hand to your thigh. We'll come to a deeper version of this in a little bit if you would like. But hand to thigh first, push down with your right big toe mound, and turn your knee more toward the pinky toe edge. Turn your belly, turn your heart, put your shoulder blade on your back, on the actually on both shoulder blades, both of them on your back, and then maybe stretch up, take a big deep breath. Push into the floor, rise all the way back up, and then turn feet parallel, turn your left foot out, and again, straight with your leg, a little micro bend if you're a hyper extender, and then as you create that hip crease, it's a little shift back with your hips, hip crease, Turn your knee from the pink, from the big toe edge to the pinky, pinky toe edge, hand to your thigh, turn your belly and your heart, shoulder blades on your back. Take a full breath, maybe stretch. One more big breath here. And then inhale, rise all the way back up. Turn your feet to parallel. And this time bring hands behind your back to clasp. As you press palms together, lift your shoulders up and back, shoulder blades are engaging. Engage your low ribs. Inhale, lift your chest, bent knees, exhale, push hips back as you draw your heart forward and fold. And now as you fold, your head can release down toward the ground here. You can always set it on a block or a prop here. Your hands can lift away from your back, but keep palms pressing. Elbows bent and hugging toward each other. Take another big breath, tilt sitting bones up. Then bent knees, squeeze your glutes, lift your shoulders first and rise all the way back up to stand. Release your hands and walk your feet in. Now we'll come to the front of your mat, feet inner hip distance apart and parallel. And we're gonna find a balance here, a little bit more of a heart opener in our balancing pose. So if you decide you'd look, rather hold on to a wall, you can do that too. So now balance on your left foot, draw right knee in toward your chest, slip your hand down your shin to take a hold of your foot and bring it behind you. You can always use a strap here, or you can just bend your knee, okay? Either one is gonna be a heart opener for you. So now wherever that is for you, Engage your foot if you're holding on to it with your hand. Engage your foot anyway, but feel it if you're holding on to it with your hand. Even out your thighs, lift your chest, lift your front ribs, put your shoulder blades onto your back, and then move your low ribs into your back body. Again, you can always be holding on to something with your left arm if you'd like to, but begin to press your right thigh back in space. Then begin to hinge at the left hip to draw your heart forward. Rotate your outer right hip down, squeeze your left glute and push into the floor. Extend your heart, engage your low ribs, maybe stretch, take a full big breath, maybe fall over, that's okay too. Take a full big deep inhale and exhale. Inhale, push into the floor to rise back up, release your foot down and then shake out your legs. And then find your balance onto your right foot. Left knee draws in toward your chest. Just slide your hand down your shin and take a hold of your foot or simply bend your knee or use a strap on your foot. That's okay too. You can always use your hand with a wall. It's a lovely way to support yourself in this. 
as you find a full big breath here, even out your thighs, and then lift higher through your ribs. Lift your chest, shoulders are up and back, engage your low ribs. Inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, begin to press back with your inner thigh on your left leg as you start to tilt forward. Press foot into hand here, extend your heart further, tone your low ribs. Take a big deep breath and push from glute into the floor on your standing leg. One more full breath. Inhale, rise back up and exhale, foot back to the ground and shake it out. And now feet are inner hip distance apart and parallel. Lift and spread your toes and root them down. Turn your palms open, expanding open through the heart space. Take a big deep breath. Inhale, stretch up overhead. Exhale, bent knees to fold over your legs. Inhale, lengthen part way. Exhale and fold. Plant fingertips, you're stepping right foot back into your lunge. Turn and plant your back heel. And now this time, bring left elbow to your knee, right hand to your hip for your side angle pose. Put both shoulder blades on your back and then stretch, top arm straight up. Turn open with your knee, extend your heart further, move your rib cage more forward, engage your low ribs. And now from that place, top hand back to your hip, and we're gonna work our front leg towards straight. So you might come down to a hand on a block, a hand or an elbow on your thigh. You can come to your shin here, but the tendency is to push back on the shin and lock the knee joint. So find where you're not locking your knee joint, extend your heart further. This turns it into that heart opening place. Shoulder blades on your back, turn your belly and your heart, stretch up if that's in your practice. Take a big deep breath. And now top hand back to your hip, bend into your front knee, plant hands and step back. Downward facing dog pose, take a deep breath. Inhale, come forward into a plank. Use knees on the ground if you want. Extend your front. Shoulder blades are hugging onto the back even as you push down. Exhale, bend elbows and lower down. Walk hands back right by your ribs. Root down through tops of feet and knees and engage low glutes, low belly. Take an exhale and lift the low ribs. Then inhale, curl up and open through the heart. Exhale, downward facing dog pose. Big breath. And work your way forward with your feet towards your hands coming into forward fold at the front of your mat. Take an inhale and lengthen part way. Exhale and fold over your legs. Plant fingertips, step left foot back into your lunge. Turn and plant your back foot so your foot's parallel to the back of your mat. Right elbow to your knee, left hand to your hip. Bend into your front knee and open it up toward the pinky toe edge, even as you turn your belly and your heart to the left. Then if it's in your practice, stretch. Top arm to the sky, take a big breath. Now top hand back to your hip. We're working our front leg towards straight. And again, find the variation here of your triangle pose that feels the best to you. So maybe hand on a block, maybe elbow or hand to your thigh. Turn your belly and your heart to the left side even as you turn your knee to the right. Full big deep breath. Feel free to stretch if that feels good. Even more so, move your whole rib cage more forward. Shoulder blades are on your back. Deep breath. Bend into your front knee, plant both hands and step back. Downward facing dog pose. Deep breath. 
Knees come to the ground, hips come to heels. Take a child's pose for a moment and check in with your body, how you're feeling. Forgive the barking dog in the background. Take a deep breath. And now rising to hands and knees, we're gonna take one more heart opener before we settle. So feel free to set something underneath your knees here if that would make your knees feel more comfortable. From hands and knees, you're rotating elbow hips forward and pushing, expanding into the upper back. Then turn your right leg. And I've done this a handful of times over the last little while, but this time we're really gonna focus on getting our whole side, our entire side body on both sides to expand. So from right here, expand from hip to armpit, take a big breath and think of using your ribs to help your expansion happen. Then turn open to face the left side. So you're balancing on your left hand, just kidding, your right hand, your right knee, turning to the left. And now push down with your standing hand and move your whole rib cage more forward. And then begin to lift your leg up. Left leg behind you, if that's in your practice. From here, bend your knee. You can stay right here with just a bent knee, or you can reach back for your foot and take a hold of it. Thighs reaching back. Move your ribs more forward, expanding your front, and then engage low belly and low ribs to expand into the back. Again, shoulder blades engage. Press your foot into your hand. Maybe turn your belly and your heart more open. Exhale, release hands down, release knees down, hips to heels for a moment, take a child's pose. Then inhale, rise back up to your hands and knees. And just in your mind, notice that this is a variation of the standing balance we did earlier in class. So turn your left leg, balance on your left hand, turning to the right side, put both shoulder blades on your back. And from right here, extend your ribs more forward. As you extend your ribs forward, tone, low belly and low ribs, then lift your right leg. Bent knee here. As you reach to your thigh, you're welcome to reach back for your foot with your right hand if you want. You don't have to. As you reach longer, think of extending in both directions, thigh back, heart forward, then engage low belly and ribs. Extend further, shoulder blades on your back, you might start to turn your belly and your heart more open as you press your foot into your hand. As you exhale, Release your foot, release your hand, settle back into a child's pose. From your child's pose, take a full big deep breath. Maybe work a little movement into your hips and your arms. And then gently push yourself up to your seat. And as you come all the way down onto your sitting bones, come all the way down onto your back. And from your back, knees draw in again for a moment, just like when we were on our backs at the beginning of class, rock a little side to side, and notice the flattening of the lumbar spine. So now, open the knees wide, aim the feet up toward the ceiling, and before you hold up high, hold down low. So hold around the backside of your thighs to create a little pull down, and a push back into your hands, tilt your sitting bones, trying to tilt them down, trying to find that lumbar curve. From there, you can reach up as high on your legs as your body needs. You might reach up for your feet, outsides of them, for your shins or ankles, or you can stay at your thighs. The idea is that you find that place where you can still tilt sitting bones down. Lumbar spine is lifting. Take a couple big breaths here. If you want, you can add a little bit of rock side to side.
and then footprints on the ground. And from that place, drop knees in together to touch. Take your hands to your upper thighs, right at your hip creases, and push onto your upper thighs so much that your low back lifts. Hips stay down, low ribs stay down. Take a big breath and fill up your low back with breath. And now arms open up here to a cactus. This is a really lovely heart opening place. Walk your shoulder blades onto your back and then notice if this is challenging for the shoulders, you're welcome to come to more of a T with the arms or arms closer to your sides. That's okay. Walk your feet out wider than your hips and then slowly drop your knees side to side. And this time, think of adding that little extra lift into the opposite hip. So as your knees drop to the left, lift your right hip up a little bit. As your knees drop to the right, lift your left hip up. And then as you do this a couple more times, just make a mental note of what is present on each side for you. Back into center now, walk your feet in. Arms can release down by your sides if you want. And then you're gonna set yourself up into your best version of Shavasana, your final rest. Feel free to add a prop or a blanket or whatever you need to come to a really comfortable rest, letting your whole body settle, letting your mind settle, letting this be the restorative place that it's meant to be. Begin to take a deeper breath. And gently add movement into fingers and toes. As you're ready to, bend your knees and roll to your side. And then slowly press yourself back up to your seat. Hands connecting at heart center. Take a moment with your eyes closed to tune back into your full breath. Have a very peaceful and beautiful rest of your day. Namaste.